And we are now live, I think. We're now live, yes. The, the little yellow light has gone on. Uh, good okay. evening and uh, welcome to Brought You On The Telly Special, Early Evening Presidential uh, Matters. Uh, we are joined by Gemma O'Doherty. Uh, today was the closing nominations at midday um, for the president to contest the presidency of Ireland. Um, Gemma, can you, can you describe the, what happened this morning? Hello and welcome, by the way, Gemma. Hello, and uh, I suppose it's non-presidential matters at this stage. I'm just going to uh, say that. Okay. Um, yeah, we had, uh, well, it was a busy, very, very busy uh, 24 hours um, just, you know, getting people on board and realising that people who you thought were on board were actually not on board. People like uh, Senator Jared Crockwell, and uh, that was all a revelation. Okay, uh, Jenny, so, Jenny, you needed you needed uh, twenty uh, Oireachtas members, either senators or TDs, and um, up uh, up to yesterday, how, how how many did you sort of count on in your in your in your own calculations? Um, well, I, I at one point I was very close to the twenty. I believed I was very close to the twenty. Uh, there was intense pressure coming down uh, on some people who were planning to sign and then backed out. Um, so at the end of the day, I had the people that I, I knew I could rely on, people like Claire Daly, Mick Wallace, Catherine Connolly, all of the people that you know are going into the doll and doing their work uh, for the people and nobody else. Um, so in the end, I think I, I ended up with 11 or 12. Yeah, there was, um, I just, can I just go through them? Because it is important. Uh, they're, they're a disparate uh, crowd. Joan Collins, Cara Daly, Mick Wallace, Catherine Connolly, Michael Fitzmaurice, Sean Canney, Tommy Bruin, Seamus Seeley, Maureen, Maureen O'Sullivan, Matty McGrath, and Ronan, Ro Senator Ronan Mullen. I mean, it's left, right, it's, they came from everywhere. But without the Sinn Féin and, say, Social Democrats and, and people before profit, it, it, you weren't going to make that 20, were you? No, with um, well, no. There are other independent senators uh, who and and TDs who I think um, would not. I wouldn't have been their cup of tea at all because I talk too much about corruption um, and it might not have fitted there. But I was very. I mean, for me, there's been so many interesting um, revelations in this. Not really revelations, but things that I knew to be true, but now they're proven to be true. Uh, just in terms of Sinn Féin, just in terms of, uh, and, and Senator Crowell, uh, because he, he sort of began this process, really, didn't he, um, way back? Yes, yes, he did. And, um, you know, he has been talking about how flawed the process is. Um, in comes a candidate who wants to expose the lack of accountability and transparency in Ireland. Um, and yet he decides not to back her at the last minute. Now, I couldn't get hold of Senator Crockwell for the last few days. Right. Um, which is as if he had vanished into the ether. Um, so I have to say Senator Crockwell is not the man I thought he was, but I don't want to be unkind either. I'm sure he has his reasons for doing what he did. The Sinn Féin candidate is Leanda Narida, but uh, she only needed 20, uh, obviously 20, uh, 20 TDs uh, to come forward. They had, tw they had a surplus of eight. Now they said that they had signed off on her, the 28 had signed off on her, so therefore they couldn't kind of reclaim that ace for you. Well, that, now that's another nonsense that's right. out by Mary Lou MacDonald, who on a personal level, I've only met her a couple of times. I like her as a woman, politically, I'm deeply disappointed. She uh, did not show any leadership. And this is the problem with the political system in Ireland. They're not showing leadership. The leaders are not leading. Um, but, you know, those surplus votes were well and truly available. Martin um, McGuinness's Martin McGuinness's surplus votes uh, in two thousand eleven. Um, uh, are, he 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 benefited from surplus votes. Is that right? Uh, uh, yeah, he benefited from um, independent votes. Yes. Um, so I do find it quite hypocritical that on this occasion, when I was asking for their surplus votes, uh, they were not available to me, and the nominations were only put in the last couple. The, her nomination was only put in in the last few days. Um, so, you know, they were well aware that I had been canvassing for those votes prior to their putting in the nomination. But look, you, li you live and learn. You live and learn. And, 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 and they had been, uh, I mean, certain Sinn Féin councillors around the country had been very supportive towards you, I know, publicly and also privately. 
Very much so. And what the grassroots Sinn Féin councillors were saying to me in rural Ireland in particular, I have to distinguish between the Sinn Féin councillors in Dublin, uh, who I didn't get the same uh, reaction from, but certainly in rural Ireland, you know, some of them were saying to me, we feel the leadership have lost touch. Uh, they're in the bubble of Leinster House. And, um, you know, they're just not down on the ground sufficiently. Can I ask about Richard Boy Barrett and Paul Murphy? Uh... I, I, I'm surprised that they didn't um, nominate you. Yeah, I'm not overly surprised about that. Um, a huge disappointment. Um, they are not the parties they claim to be. I have seen fascist leanings in those parties in recent weeks. Um, a couple of people connected to those parties demanded, demanded to know how I voted in the abortion referendum. Now, to me, this is a form of fascism. One of the most precious tenets of democracy is the secret ballot, okay? I don't ask you, John, how you vote. Do you vote Fianna Fáil or Labour or Sinn Féin, okay? And nobody has any right to ask me how I vote on any matter, especially a matter of conscience. Yesterday, I was in the Dáil Canteen talking to one of their members and she literally saw, like it verbally attacked me on this issue, demanding to know how I voted. Now we are heading down a very dangerous road. This is the sort of tactic that Hitler would have adopted. It's fascism. And these parties have shown themselves up for what they are. I was an anti-corruption and am anti-austerity candidate. And yet they rejected me utterly. They could have got me over the line if they wanted to. But those parties are going to suffer at the polls because the number of people who have contacted me and sent me messages saying, never again, Richard Boyd Barrett. He's bringing his troops up to the top of the hill. And what happens then? It's all huff and puff. So, so they're not going to blow the house down. When you speak to, when you speak to Richard Boyd Barrett or, or Paul Murphy, I'm not sure whether you have... Um... What is that? What are their reasons? Look, first of all, I mean, Paul Murphy has, again, been a major disappointment on a number of fronts. Um, Paul Murphy has just not responded to okay. my calls or texts recently. Um, when Paul Murphy was going through his own difficulties in relation to the Jobstown trial, I was one of the very few journalists who supported him. I went down to that trial. I was appalled at what was happening there. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying, you know, OK, so there should be a quid pro quo. Um, but I did stick my neck out on that. Um, do, I you know, do, do, do you know the reason, Gemma? I mean, do you, would you know the reason why? why well, Paul I'm going to come to that. Yeah, oh, sorry. OK. Yeah, OK. Again. But another reason why I believed Paul Murphy should have got behind me is that I have exposed decades of child sexual abuse in Terenure College, which is part of his, basically his backyard and his constituency. Okay. Very close by. Did he go um, there? And I know... Hmm? Did he go to Terenure? No, he didn't go to Terenure as far as I know. But there are many victims of child sexu sexual abuse, uh, men in their 40s, 50s and 60s, who live in his constituency, some of whom contacted him and right. said, please, this was the first time that the truth came out about this scandal. Um, and yet you are not backing her. Why not? OK, so why not? Um, I believe that um, these parties are not really truly democratic. They say to me, we don't recognize the presidency. I say, hold on a minute. Would you rather have somebody in there who is part of the elite, who is wasting taxpayers' money, who is living the high life on our taxes? Or would you rather have somebody in there who is talking about corruption? talking about the failure of democracy, talking about the lack of transparency and accountability. I said to them, the presidency is going nowhere. You know, we'd have to rewrite the constitution. The presidency is with us to stay in Ireland. Okay. okay? So yes. you're not going to change it. And I just believe that that's just, a, you know, a red herring. I, I don't believe, um, I think there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. I mean, Richard Boyd Barrett finally uh, texted me today uh, at the, the 11th hour 
um, and said that, you know, he was it, it was a party decision. Where is the leadership? The one thing, you know, I, I've known it for a good while, but the one thing I will say is that you would actually see more independent thinking on a sheep farm than you would in Leinster House at the moment. Can you can you can you answer me though, just in terms of the the debates that we will now have on on television and radio and uh, sort of public meetings? There won't be there won't be like uh, irrespective of you know uh, d what your detractors say, you will bring topics in, into the conversation that other the other candidates simply will not because they're not interested in those topics. For Barrett, uh, Richard Boyd Barrett and, and Paul Murphy, things like take back the city, things like uh, cor corruption, endemic corruption in Irish life, I mean, surely they want those things in, 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 discussed at those well, debates. Look, it's all talk and no action with those parties. You would think they would want those. I said that to them. Who's going to be raising these issues? Um, well, well, the dragons won't. And I mean, I, I, I appreciate Joan Freeman uh, may do, but the, the major it's not the major plank of her campaign the, 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 the... no it's not and you know i mean one of the issues i have with senator freeman is that she represents the charity industry uh, the charity industry in ireland um it basically it, it means that people are paying on the double for everything all right and yeah. um, all of the basic rights the right to mental health care which is her focus um, the right to, you know, proper first world health care service, the right to affordable housing. Tonight, we have people out in the streets of Dublin who are doing the job of government. And this is one of the things that I would like to have spoken about in the debate, that citizens don't, I don't think they understand their rights anymore in Ireland. And that's because A, of the media is to blame, but because democracy is broken completely. Well, Children... I, think, I, I think even Gemma, I, I mean, again, I'll say that your, even your critics will, will agree that this process, what you've exposed with this process and, and the other nominees have exposed with this process, it's, it's, it's a total lock-in. I mean, it's a fix. The fix is in. It's um, a total... And when you say my critics, I mean, you're talking about the Dennis O'Brien press, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael Labour, uh, some sock dem trolls. Guards. Uh, the only... The Garthy, yeah. So, but I mean, of course, I have critics, but I, I am I'm not. Saying, I'm saying that even, even I'm saying that even your critics will agree that this process is so uh, unfair. Unless, well, unless they would. I mean, they love it. They thrive off it. I mean, it's you know. But I'm not interested in my critics. I'm interested in the people of Ireland who are getting a raw deal, and um, the, the people who criticise somebody who stands up against corruption who wants to stand up for truth and justice is not worth the time of day in my opinion they probably don't deserve to have citizenship in my opinion they're traitors to ireland in my opinion the the, 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 the fringe parties and uh, i have to include i mean um the social democrats here I mean, we i have to declare an interest uh i mean we've been fairly friendly towards the social democrats we have Anne Marie mcnally uh, as a columnist and I suppose um, they seem to seem very, like terribly nice people, <laughs> you know. But I was surprised, though, that they that they didn't support your nomination and very early on supported Michael D. Higgins without, I don't know, without any kind of seemingly but, any kind of public debate around it. Yeah, again, you know, we're not in this to be nice, all right? It's not about nice person, this person. We're in to affect change, affect change for our country all right and um, if that makes you unpopular so be it this is the one of one of the problems with the press in ireland they work as a little pack i've been watching them in leinster house they work all together in a little pack they want to be friends with each other they want to be pals with the politicians yeah. and it's dangerous for democracy yeah okay so nice doesn't cut it for me of course we all try to be nice and we not try to be kind but there are times where you have to say, OK, I'm standing up for what is right. And if that means I make a few enemies along the way, as somebody once said to me when Dennis O'Brien was, um, you know, doing what he did to me, um, the, you know, and my journalistic colleagues, colleagues effectively turned their backs on me. Somebody said to me, do you want to be popular with people like that? And I said, no. And it's it, that's something I say to myself when I see them 
turning away from me and they can't look me in the eye. And I feel sorry for them because they're beholden. They can't do their jobs. Well, I, I was speaking to a journalist today, uh, a gentleman whom I respect very much. And he said that he had never seen anything like the uh, attacks on you on Twitter in, in his life in journalism, 20 years or so in journalism. And um, however, he didn't say that he, he defended you publicly or anything like that. You know, that, that, that was the, the, the silent bit. But um, but I don't I don't want public defense. I just every time they attack me, they show themselves. The mask drops. They are attacking themselves when they attack me. Um, and that has been one of the lessons that people have looked at their behavior and said, what are they like? They're an embarrassment to their profession. Um, but again, I have to say, I pity them. They're economic hostages. They were caught up by the, the, you know, the crash as well. They have their mortgages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Newspapers I, I, are going down the drain. But at the end of the day, they're journalists and they have to do their jobs and they're not doing, most of them are not doing their job. Well, they, they seem to be spending a lot of time on Twitter. That's for, <laughs> that's for certain. A lot no, of them. Um, can you please, um, this is from the comments uh, that have just come in, Gemma. Uh, can you please ask Gemma to answer why it's a so-called undemocratic process if elected members do not support her? If and, elected uh, members do not do support not. her, the, the, meaning if elected councillors and elected TDs simply do not support you, How's, how can you call that undemocratic if, if okay, they themselves well, are elected? They have a democratic duty to every seven years allow the public to have a choice of candidacies for the of candidates for the, the role of head of state all right so that that is their democratic duty i believe if they were true democrats they would have said okay hang on a minute here we have three dragon businessmen who are all selling the same spiel let's yep. face it there's no there's no difference so those three candidates are the same i have to say have indistinguishable i have to say nobody can 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 give me a good indis a distinguishable trait between them i have to say sorry go on no between the dragons. We have a Fianna Fáil, a Fianna Gael appointed senator. Uh, we have Sinn Féin candidate and we have uh, the incumbent who has not exactly covered himself in glory, let's face it. And he hasn't exactly, um, you know, set the world on fire. But I do think so, he is beloved. Let's face it. I mean, just on, in terms of uh, public affection, I think he, he, there is enormous public affection for yeah, but this is going back to the nice. Of course, people, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and look, we can do better than nice. He's pop. This look. So was Princess Diana. So are celebrities on the front pages of all these glossy rubbish magazines. You know, this is the sort of herd mentality. Oh, they're great. We don't know the first thing about them. How do we know they're great people? What have they done? Well, what we certainly didn't. Serve us. Well, we didn't know? know. We certainly didn't know about his uh, his allowance. Uh, his top up allowance which i have to say took my breath away is 317,000 on top of his salary as an unaudited allowance it's just so well look i mean labor have yet again covered themselves in disgrace well they're yeah, defending I, this of course but the sock dance are you know i mean people before profit anti-austerity solidarity whatever they call themselves are, are are going to allow this to happen um this is our money this yeah. is the, the, the country that bailed out Europe more than any other citizen in the last banking crisis. And we're probably heading into another one. I got to say, I'm sure, it was, I'm sure it was McCreevy who brought it in, but like uh, Higgins has been getting it for the last seven years. And I know he, he gives, away t gives back 10% of it or something for charity, but uh, like he's got about four I, or five pensions, this guy. It's shocking. From, I, from I various uh, outings, TD, senator, even probably a teacher, you know. I mean, how much money do these guys need? How much do they need, really? You know, I mean, you don't need that much money, actually, at all. You know, and I watched him when I met him down in Cork um, in August as part of the Oriada Festival of, of whatever, uh, Hero Festival. But I watched the entourage around him, the number of Garthi, the number of BMWs, it frightened me. I thought this is not necessary for a country like Ireland. 
Um, you can understand it in Washington, okay. You know, this yeah. is Ireland. This was in the middle of nowhere in Cork in a yeah. friendly, you know, lovely atmosphere, festival atmosphere. And there are fluorescent jackets everywhere. And you yeah. just think these people are completely out of control spending the public's money. <laughs> and, and and when you look towards the, the say the Scandinavian countries, the Norwegian countries, it's 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 in the opposite direction. They're simple. There's uh, bicycles, and you know it's it, it, it's low key. This it does seem, and you know just on the side over the last two years, the pomp and ceremony at the Oros is uh, is really kind of kind of almost French in its pretension. You know, it is. It Sorry. is. It's, it, 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 it's, it's repulsive, given the, the pain of so many people. Um, it's repulsive. And they should hang their heads in shame. And, and I, I don't say that easily. Um, well, I think just, sure. can, I, can I just on the, on the plus side, I must say Sabina has been a fantastic kind of representative. I think she's fantastic with children and, and families who go to the Aorus. And I know the Magdalene women were there recently. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to give a bit of a bit, bit more balance, but it's more of that nice stuff as as you uh, as you as you It's easy out. stuff. It's easy. You know, it's not. She's not making. She's not holding. They're not. You know, saying to the. You know, they're not speaking out and saying, "Look, our country is in tatters. Our country is a shambles. It's a shambles at the moment. Something has to. You know, something has to change. But it is changing because this has been a moment of revelation for a lot of people. And they are saying, we're not going to take this anymore. And the smaller parties have exposed themselves. And I am now really encouraging people when they go to, to vote in the coming months, which they will, the local elections are in May. Yep. And we're bound, I, I mean, it's hard to know how long, I mean, this confidence and supply probably could go on for a good bit longer. But, you know, they have to break the habits. The party system has failed Ireland. We well, now need to rely, to look to independence. This country runs quite well, despite all of the corruption, despite all of the chaos caused by government departments and the HSE and so on. So, for example, imagine a country, imagine an Ireland where you had Claire Daly in charge of justice. Just imagine that for a minute. Imagine Claire Daly in charge of the Gardaí. The fear in those people, they would think twice before they did wrong. Imagine how much of our taxes would be saved if someone like Catherine Connolly was in charge of finance. Yeah. We can achieve this as a country and we that's what we have to head for. And I'm not talking 10 years from now. I am talking in May and whenever the general election is. We have to find good people on the ground who cannot be bought because I see so many of those politicians in Leinster House who are compromised to vested interests. C can you tell me now then uh, this movement, if, if this is a movement you, you describe, this end corruption movement, uh, could it become a political party in itself? No. I, I just think that that is, the party system has not only failed Ireland, it's failed the bulk of the planet. This might be very radical thinking on my part, but you see the people in the doll who are having effect. It's they're the independents, the people yeah. who have their own minds, not the Richard Boyd Barrett's who has to check with his party before he eats breakfast. No, that's not working for Ireland. Um, and it hasn't worked. It has to be a grassroots movement of independent minded people who hold on to their independence who are not compromised by the guards, haven't had their penalty points wiped or whatever, little favours done here and there. They have to be clean, moral, ethically upstanding people. And I'm, we can find them. They're in every community in Ireland. And we can clean this country up very easily if we want to. And if elected, then, are you talking about a loose a grouping of, the, of these independents? For instance, you've got Clara Mick for, there. Uh, I mean... Well, they're leading the way. They're the shining lights, as is Catherine Connolly and Joan Collins and Maureen O'Sullivan and, you know, people like that. Um, Michael Fitzmaurice was really good. Sean Canny, I didn't know Sean. Um, and Sean is, is, you know, he seems to be very independent minded and, and working for the good of the country, I would say. Um, but, 
yeah no i i i mean my my ideal scenario is to try and find these people and encourage them to go into public office and you look at the treatment of somebody in, in my case who puts her head above the parapet I, i'm a journalist to the core i love journalism but i had reached a point where i thought i can't allow this to ha i just cannot allow you know a man connected to dennis o'brien gavin duffy to become our head of state so that for me was the final straw so i threw myself into it because i love my country yeah but you saw how my character was decimated at every turn. I was called all sorts of appalling names. Uh, you have a constitutional right to defend your good name. When I said that if people stop, don't stop defaming me, I will, you know, I will take an action. But then they said, oh, no, you, you know, oh, who do you think you are threatening to defend your good name? So all of that insanity is that, you know, it sends out a message to people. This is what happens if you put yourself forward for public office um, and you want, to, you want to highlight wrongdoing. Well, and I, it's, it's appalling that the media do that because they're discouraging, you know, well, well, people just, from going forward. Yeah, just to give some background, um, Gemma, I think at the end, in July at the Daniel Carroll Summer School gave a speech about corruption and particularly focusing on media corruption. Uh, or how media have allowed corruption to thrive in Ireland and made particular reference to the Irish Times. And I think you lost their support that night anyway, that, uh, certainly because they have been virulent on Twitter about, uh, about you. And this was once the paper of record, um, I think it's it's uh, shown itself up very, very badly on, on, as, as regards your campaign. It's, they, they took what you said very personally and... Uh, well, I mean, you know, the, the point that I was making there was, and this was this point was made by their former editor, Geraldine Kennedy, long before I made it, when she went to the banking inquiry and spoke about how pressure was put on her uh, as editor of the paper by vested interests within the property um, yeah. business who were putting pressure on her, running stories that said a crash was on the way and these were state agents who were keeping the property supplements going and keeping the paper going. Um, so this, we thought it could never happen again, but the so-called property porn, as it's dubbed, is worse than ever in the Irish Times because the Irish Times circulation is falling. Revenues, advertising revenues are falling. So they are having to rely on estate agents. Yeah. They are driving up for advertising revenue. They're driving yeah. up the price of properties mm -hmm. and young couples who are get trying to get on the property ladder read these crazy, you know, ads for two bedroom cottages in the city centre in Dublin for half a million. They're being told that these are dream homes. And it, in my opinion, it's a form of treason. Because and then, and then on, the, on the next page, you've got a picture of children and sleeping in, sleep in a guard station. So the, 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 they have argued vehemently that uh, the advertising has nothing to do, it has no effect upon the market whatsoever. And the Irish Times' coverage has no effect upon the, the, the market whatsoever. I just wanted to... I, I who, who pays their wages? Well, I, I mean, it, it would look like now that it, it is the property industry that is keeping the paper going, effectively, I would say. I mean, look, going through all the ads over the week, the Thursday is it seems to be their biggest advertising day, and without and that it's Thursday, so big money because it's not sold as advertorial, as we say in the trade. It's sold as editorial. So people look at it and say, "Well, if the Irish Times is telling me this is a great dream home yeah. for half a million, but I wouldn't be able to swing a cat in it, <laughs> well, then maybe I should go for it." You know, and this is what is criminal about this. Well, yeah. but and it's well, and it's, it's the fact. That criminal in inverted I think it is yeah. to to force young couples to buy at ridiculous prices and be burdened by odious debt for decades and to have a tiny little house that they've no hope of raising a family in but the, what is really wrong about it is we should have learned from the Celtic tiger yeah. but we're doing it all over again well yeah um, in uh, Dr. Julian Marseille uh, wrote many, many pieces about the Irish Times' uh, later coverage of the boom 
not really sort of foreseen the foreseen the crash and literally like 10 years it's literally happened again it's um well it's the definition it's of insanity happened. huh yeah it's the um, definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result but that's a cliche in ireland yeah, now it is it but is the other but issue it's like, I... it's like offering track mortgages or something now it just seems like <laughs> what, 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 can't they don't they have a different strategy of some kind you know but i suppose it's money Sorry, Jim. Well, it's the same parties with the same policies. You know, they haven't said, well, let's try and do it a different way. And that's why I'm telling people, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, it's over. Get out of the political scene, please. You've had your 100 years, virtually. You've what if there what, what if there isn't a suitable independent candidate in, in your constituency? What would you, who would you suggest? I mean, is there any party? I mean, Sinn Féin, I know I've let you down personally on this matter, but overall, would you, would you, would you be favour Sinn Féin in government, for instance? But they haven't let me down personally. They've let the country down and they've let their party down and they've let their grassroots members down. They've let democracy down. Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to discuss my voting intentions at the no, moment. They're, they're, they're pretty bleak. Yeah, but I mean, if you were in a constituency without this, without a kind of a, um, a maverick independent, without an independent minded independent there, there's no parties you would no, nothing out there that would would appeal to you with there you know there isn't the smaller ones are worse in my opinion i i watched michael martin in the doll today and he, he looked sort of like he had a bit of a a pep in his step because he must be rejoicing in the fact that Sinn Féin, the sock dems um pbp and anti-austerity have disgraced themselves in this process and, you know, he looked like a happy man today um, because they've shown themselves up to be no better than Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Labour. And that's the reality, because they had the chance to say there needs to be an independent voice in this election. It's the head of state. It's a very powerful role. But instead, we're going to allow TV celebrities to go in and, you know, um, you know, I'm sure Leonie Reeda is, is she's probably going to, to come out the best of it. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know much about her. Um, in terms of the in terms of what you were describing about uh, your voting um, during the repeal uh, um, referendum, do, do you feel that, that that's fair uh, for Joan Freeman to 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 answer those questions? I mean, uh, you don't you feel that uh, we position on when we ask citizens how they voted, this is a form of fascism, all right? It is a private ballot. We go in to the election booth every few years to do what we have to do. And there is, it is private for a reason. And that is to protect us as citizens. So we don't, we can go in there no matter how compromised a person might be in public life but they can go in and vote for who they like or for what they think and we need to be careful as a country and one of the cornerstones of my candidacy was about free speech and freedom of expression we need to be so careful in this country because we are heading into an era now in fact we're in it where people who hold views that may not be the mainstream view, the so-called mainstream view, but they are not allowed to express them. And this is dangerous. True Democrats like Boyd Barrett and people like that, Ruth Coppinger I'm talking about too, they need to get over themselves and stop all this nonsense about abortion. Abortion is finished. They've got there's going to be the most our abortion laws in Ireland will be among the most liberal in the world. All right. That's the reality. The debate is over. We now have to tackle austerity and corruption and the suffering of our citizens on the streets tonight. And I'm really one of the, the things I have learned about this is how obsessed these people are with abortion. What is wrong with them? What is wrong with them? Well, it was it was a uh, you know um, a campaign that lasted generations. Um, the X case, it was so it was such a it's been such a painful journey that I think that sides were so entrenched, you know, and 
for, from from the pro pro life, it was this is this is you know at the extreme end it was this is murder, and and at the at the pro choice side it was simply this is a choice, and it's uh, a choice for um, a vulnerable woman who needs a choice. So the, the sides are so embedded. Um, it's probably going to take another generation or two for it to it, it to actually kind of settle. But, but they have created a toxic society. If they but, are so childish not to be able to hate the other person's view, but accept their right to say it, then they are not Democrats. And that's what I've sensed from these very hard left parties. Well, it's, it's not just hard I, left, um, Gemma. I mean, uh, Lucinda Crichton, who, who, regardless of her politics, was very, very capable. She, she was, was effectively kicked out of her party on this, on the, on this principle. So... They're, they're not a left-wing party. I, I'm not, means, no, I, I, I didn't know Lucinda that well. I admired her for standing up to Dennis O'Brien. Um, but I don't remember her being hard. I, I, I remember, I mean, I only met her a few times, but she didn't have this hardness. I have seen hardness. No, I'm saying that she, she herself was uh, on a principle, on, on this principle. She felt that it should be a free vote. Um, and she was uh, on abortion. But, she was I mean, pro, look, look, she was pro life, and I'm saying that her right wing party kicked her out for, for holding those principles. But just, whether just, we um, like it or not, for many people, abortion is a matter of conscience. Whether we like it or not, yes. it is. There are many people who cannot get their heads around the fact that that fetus, baby, child, whatever we want to call it, in the womb is a human being. And we have to be big enough to say, we respect your right to think that we don't agree with it but we respect your right and we're not going to fall out with you because you hold that right dear to you we're going to treat you with respect yeah. that's what i'm saying we yeah. need as a country to heal the wounds between these two factions they need to come together because and i and i have to say that I have, you know, because I didn't jump up and down during the repeal referendum, because that's not what a journalist is supposed to do. A journalist is supposed to stay neutral in the face of a referendum, no matter what it's about. Um, but I was, you know, accused of that. I mean, Boyd Barrett said to me, you weren't a champion of repeal. And I said to him, every other journalist in the land, from what I could see, nearly every other was, I was busy fighting corruption. I mean, there are people I, I, tonight who are I'm not, no, I, yeah, sorry. Go on. There are people tonight who are losing their homes. There are people tonight whose loved ones were murdered, and these murders have been covered up by our police force. They're my issues. I can't tackle every issue going, and you know, and it, it, it's just okay. People Gemma, they have to calm down a bit. Gemma, the, a, couple, a few comments. Um, uh, a lot of people are saying um, to continue on. Uh, most people are asking if, you, if you'll go forward in politics. Karina Allen has asked, she, um, this is a compliment. Um, she has indomitable courage in the face of adversity, always, fears nothing. Uh, she'll rip, whip this country into shape, no doubt about that. Her dedication, to, dedicated determination is going no, nowhere. Sorry, I don't, I, I don't want to just uh, give you idle flattery, but it, is, it seems quite positive. Uh, um, this evening, uh, so I just wanted to pass that on to you. And I just want to repeat my point um, that Lucinda was kicked out of a right wing party for holding those views. They were, you know, isn't they were as intolerant as 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 how you were describing the left wing as well. I think. Well, and, and Sinn Fein have kicked out. I think two. Well, certainly one. Well, you know, I mean, two of their good members were because on their in their conscience, abortion wasn't right for them. You know, and that showed Sinn Féin to be completely lacking in any um, sense of democracy, really. That, look, we have to allow people within our parties to have different views on matters of conscience. We have to allow them to have different views full stop, because if yeah, they want yeah. to rep represent the people on the ground, the people on the ground don't think the same way. They all have different. And this is the problem with Ireland. It goes back to this, which I believe is a fundamental problem. We have a, a sheep mentality in this country and we've behaved like sheep for too long by voting in the same parties again and again and again. And I know people say, well, there's no choice, but that means we have to start putting ourselves forward. And that's why I did this. 
I think, uh, Gemma, I have to say something. There isn't an, an element that I don't think you're, you're factoring in here. You know, uh, Adamant once sang, uh, ridicule is nothing to be scared of, but uh, it bloody is. And uh, a lot of people um, are, would be terrified of, the, of, the, of what you've gone through, the amount, the amount of ridicule. I mean, there was one day I, I said uh, to Alga, I would be curled up in a ball if, if, this, if I was facing this, this sort of onslaught of uh, criticism and personal um, remarks. Uh, not a lot of people have your courage, uh, or not a lot of people have um, your, that ability to, get, to walk through all that. But I, I don't see it as courage. You know, can you sleep at night? Did you, did you do anything today that hurt somebody else? Did you hurt somebody today? You know, these are the things that matter, nothing else. Am I popular? Do people love me? That doesn't matter. No. Can I live with myself? That's the well, only I, I, thing. I'm Am about, I'm I behaving talking, talking like, in a way? Like you're saying, yes, they're sheep, they're the people, you know, they're, 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 but, but it's, it's, more, it's more than that. It's more subtle than that. I think they're, they're very meek and... Uh, uh, finding their voice or finding a voice is very difficult. Like it's it's taken you a long time to find your voice, I suppose. Uh, you know, in your well, life. Well, no, I, I, my voice was taken from me by Dennis O'Brien and Stephen Ray and I and M. Um, and I had a voice. I had a voice in the Independent um, under Tony O'Reilly for nearly twenty years, where I, you know, got to do my journalism, and I was very privileged. We had nearly, you know, we had a huge readership back in the glory days of journalism. I know people say Tony O'Reilly, but Tony O'Reilly did not interfere yeah, yeah, with the paper. Yeah, yeah. You know that we've had this conversation in the way that Dennis O'Brien yeah, interferes no. with press freedom. So and Dennis O'Brien, um, Tony O'Reilly was a self-made businessman. Um, so I had a voice in i and and I, you know, and I felt very lucky to have had that on behalf of people. Yes. The stories I wanted to tell. When I say people are sheep, it's not their fault necessarily because they have a media, mainly in RTE, who have been molding them for years, molding them to think that it's acceptable for politicians to go on RTE and get an easy ride, molding them to think that it's okay for the leader of the so called opposition, well, we know he isn't. Michal Martin to go on Ryan Tuberty and have a lovely soft interview. This is the taxpayer paying for this. So, you know, I'm trying to say to people, that's crazy. What's happening there? You know, the late, late show, Tuberty interviewing Michal Martin. Outrageous abuse of public money. Um, you know, and and I have to so I, I, I'm gonna say uh, something in the last few days I've seen Orti have upped the, they upped their coverage of you anyway since certainly since the weekend. I, I don't know if that was anything, anything to do with what you said, but they, 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 at least they had you on the telly. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really watch it. I, I, it you know, I just, it, it scares me what they're doing to the population. But I think people are, are switching off more and more. Mm. And we really have to start thinking about the license fee. Um, because again, like the social contract is broken, that this is supposed to be a public service broadcaster. They have been given the national airwaves to serve us, not to serve power, but they are puppets of Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil, and they bring shame on journalism every day, day in, day out. And according uh, to Owen, hang on, and according to Owen Harris, they're puppets of Sinn Féin, so let's not forget that. I mean, uh, it's a well, if, she, if Sinn Féin don't watch themselves, they're, they're going to be the new Fianna Fáil. Like, let's face it, they need to watch themselves. They should be this um, Punch and Judy show that went on in the Dáil last night. I mean, really, it, it, look, the numbers were never going no. to be there to get. So, no. you know, how much public money was wasted doing that? Really, at this stage, the Dáil is so dysfunctional. Those opposition TDs and senators should be getting up out of their seats and walking out of there. Something has to change because democracy is not working within Leinster House. And really, it's a farce and an insult. But as soon as you go into Leinster House, you feel the bubble, the bubble, the bubble. It's, um, you know, the journalist all palsy with the politicians. And yeah, uh, it's, and it's like the outside world doesn't exist. You were, you, you were in there uh, Tuesday and this morning, were you? 
Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, as a journalist, I would be in and out, but I haven't been in much recently until this week. Um, and, you know, one of the things that struck me um, was there's always, whenever I'm in there, there's always a sense of, oh, you know, here she is annoying everyone. Um, but particularly so this time because of why the reason I was there, you know, getting my signatures and that. And uh, the ushers on a number of occasions um, made the representative that I was with um, feel very uncomfortable about the fact that I might be approaching politicians. Um, right. And, you know, I was told twice in the last 24 hours in Dáil Éireann um, not to approach politicians, okay? Now, I turn around and I say, it's my parliament and I will talk to who I want, okay? But lobbying apparently is not allowed in Dáil Éireann. Yeah. Now, you, you sit around in Leinster House for, you know, 20 minutes and you see lobbyists in and out in their suits right. and driving in in their mercs. So it's a, only a certain type of lobbying is not allowed. And, you know, the ushers, they're lovely people. And I know a few of them. But, you know, they need to really remember who they're serving. I know the rules are the rules. And, but, and did you approach any politicians? I'm sure you did. Of course I did. Mm -hmm. And um, I approached them because I know them. Yeah. I approached um, Brian Stanley, Sinn Féin TD, whose wife very kindly got me over the line in leash with other um, councillors. I approached him to, to thank him on, her, on her behalf, my behalf and to thank her. And, you know, again, I think this was seen, I, you know, I know politicians, so, but no, this was seen as, oh no, she's trying to get votes. Um, right. <laughs> and, I, you know, with some of them, yes, I did speak to them. Um, but this is a democratic exercise. But the, it's just the hypocrisy of it because there's so many powerful vested interests in Dáil Éireann every day lobbying. Um, but yet my type of lobbying was not allowed. No. And, you know, the whole sort of security around Leinster House. I mean, I, I was in Congress in, the, in Washington a couple of years ago and you just walk in and out. Yeah. You just do your security and you can be down at your local congressperson's door and in his office or her office within minutes right just right in, in you know in, yes. in the, it's the same in westminster you you don't need all this oh, and you you know the td yeah. has to come down to the gate yeah. to let you in and it's it's you know another sign that democracy in ireland is just you know it's so broken and leinster house is is only for the privileged really it's not for the citizen yeah, I must say when I see sort of grown men in chauffeur driven car, you know, like guys in their 30s in chauffeur driven cars, you know, in a small country, again, like, I think, I think the thing that has resonated, uh, Gemma, is that we're such a small country, you know, like, and we, do, we don't need all this sort of uh, baggage and b b b pomp and, and all this sort of self importance and it just shows insecurity, in fact, in my view, but it's you know, chosen an insecure country rather than a secure people. It's a, it's a, a big infer, inferiority complex that we have, possibly from dating back to colonialism. I think it's a lot to do with the legacy of child abuse as well. Yeah. People, when I say this, they, they, they don't know really what I'm, sometimes don't know what I'm talking about, but I've learned an awful lot about the impact of child sexual abuse um, in recent months, because of some of the stories I've been doing and, and dealing with victims of it. And, you know, especially in relation to Terran Your College, which produced some of the brightest and the best and the pillars of society in Ireland. Yeah. And some of those were sexually abused as little boys. And oh, yeah. they never dealt with it. And they turned into narcissists. And narcissists, you know, are people who, unfortunately for them, they don't feel empathy and um, they can't deal with, um, you know, that they, they sort of lack compassion um, oh. and they don't, they can't deal with other people's pain. And also the suicide. We've suicide. seen that it... in banking. Yeah, sorry, I, I think that the other route is suicide, uh, you know, um, 
you know, our huge, our huge suicide figures here in Ireland, a lot of them could be traced back to child sex abuse. In my and, view. and the, the alcohol soaked society that we live in too. Why are so, why, I mean, you know, we, we are a nation of alcoholics let's face it i mean you know well certainly binge drinkers yeah heavy binge, binge drinkers. drinkers it's it's we and there's no attempt to deal with that there's no attempt by the political elite really to tackle that what is causing all of this alcoholism what's causing all of this drug abuse why do so many people need to be taking things to escape the reality and i think it is a lot to do with childhood and sexual abuse and in my opinion i was lucky thank god i was never physically or sexually abused as a child yeah yeah but it is much more widespread and we are not being educated about the impact it has on people as adults when oh, they absolutely. don't get treatment or counseling i completely agree i mean i i wasn't so lucky myself uh, the christian brothers uh, as you'd expect but um yeah i, I completely agree and uh the correlation between or the connection between suicide and child sex abuse is, is, is so obvious and uh, really needs to be examined because the last 10 years have been like a, like the psalm in slow motion. You know, suicides in Ireland, young people, vast numbers of, of readers of Broadsheet uh, have killed themselves. I, we, we, you know, we're commenters on the site and stuff like that. Um, desperate, desperate uh, carnage there, really. Um, and particularly in the, in, the, in the few years up to f sort of 2016. It was obviously economic as well. You know, it was putting a lot of pressure on people, but a uh, tremendous amount so of suicides, yeah. Tremendous yeah. and so much depression. And, you know, we can say, oh, it's in our genes and it's in our, you know, but no, I mean, people are just being denied the right to have a good life in this country. I mean, we, it, we're such a lovely country. We're so blessed. I, and, I, yeah. you know and it'd be so easy to get it right but there's far too many people in pain yeah there and are it, yeah. It, it's it's and that's what you're seeing on intolerable twitter. but what you're seeing what you're seeing on twitter is an, an extension of that as well a lot of people in pain a lot of people angry a lot of people uh, blaming other people for their their problems and and whatnot um exactly I, and it's the compassion we you know we've lost our compassion i think as a country well, that's what I was saying about this lockdown. They seem terribly nice. And I'm, what I meant really was that we've seemed kind of compassionate and empathetic and all that and all those qualities that, that you know, I, I would certainly look for, look for in a party, but a um, bit, bit disappointed with them tonight. tonight. Lo loads of comments, um, uh, uh, Gemma. I, I, won't, I won't go through with them. Oh, oh yeah. Um, oh, okay. I don't want this. Okay. Um, but Gemma, is it... it, it, it is there anything else you'd like to add? I mean, it's been an incredibly tough campaign for you. Um, also, can I, can I ask, how, how have you funded uh, your, the, the campaign so far? Um, I, I, I understand this could be the only campaign funded by Dennis O'Brien, is that right? That's right. Yeah, Dennis was very kind. And, um, you know, I want to actually take this opportunity to thank Dennis. Um, because if I hadn't sued him successfully, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. Um, so, you know, I, I, I had to go to the high court to defend my good name when I was called a doorstepper um, and other things by um, INM. And, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I was successful. I won my case at the high court and that has given me the ability to do my journalism for free, which I've been doing it for the last few years. Um, and I'm lucky. I am lucky that I'm not financially beholden to anyone and any bank. And I'm in the privileged few. And that's why I feel I have a duty to put to to do this now, because mm. so many of our citizens, you know, are, are having they're, they're so beholden to banks and they're so, you know, burdened by debt that they will never pay off. Um, and like I do feel I have to do this on their behalf to speak out because I can. Well, um, I think he gets a lot of stick. I'm glad that uh, he was able to fund your campaign so far. I'm glad that you, uh, you made an incredible impact. I'm sure we'll be feeling the re re reverberations for a while. Um, everybody wants to know what you do next, uh, Gemma. Have you any ideas, any specific plans? Well, I have been offered a, a journalist in residence program in Germany. Oh, okay. Um, which is part of an EU 
funded program um, and it, I've been doing a lot of work uh, in the area of press freedom um, when Brexit finally gets its act together and happens Ireland will be the only English speaking country left in the EU right. and if if it stays that is and I would see us moving away um, yeah. but so we will have the only English speaking press and media in the EU um, and so as part of this program, I intend to put the focus on Ireland, what's happening with Dennis O'Brien, with RTE, um, and how our media are failing the public interest and are beholden to power. Um, so it's my intention to do that, but I... How long, you know, how long is that? Is that for a year or, or two years? Or um, it's for s several months, yeah. Okay, okay. And, um, uh, but you mentioned, you mentioned Brexit there, sorry. Um, would you would you be interested in the Argzit Argzit uh, Freedom Party or anything like that? I mean, does that? Well, you know, I'm pro migration. I'm pro. You know, I like living in a multicultural society as long as the people that we are inviting in here are not suffering any more than the citizens are. Um, and I worry that some of the migrants that are coming to live here are having their rights abused. Um, and you know, maybe they don't have the same voting rights as citizens. And is this why, um, you know, we, we need to be very, very careful um, okay. that our migrant populations are not being abused, which I think they are. And they're living in conditions that are probably substandard in many cases. Well, certainly directed so, them, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Ireland is going to move towards, more and more towards an IREXIT position. The EU is you know it's it it hasn't been the dream that it promised to be uh look at us I mean, we're paying the highest interest rates in europe at the moment um and we had to be the poster boys and girls for austerity uh we didn't yeah. do what the greeks did because the police here wouldn't let us but i mean the greeks you know took to the streets and said we're not taking this mm. uh, i know things are different oh. there now but I, I think Ireland on its own would stand very well. We have to stop relying on FDI multinationals. They haven't been really that good for Ireland. I want to see Ireland promoting Irish things again. I want to be able to go into a, to down my local, you know, down Grafton Street and see Irish shops. I'm sick and tired of British chain stores and American fast food outlets. I want yeah. to see Ireland Irish again in terms of brands and. I don't focus. think there's not many Irish brands who could afford the rent and rents on Grafton Street. That's the that's the problem. Um, and the, but it's not the problem for all of us. Uh, Gemma, um, thank you very much uh, for all the interviews that we've done over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's been, I think, it's been great to to see you just uh, away from the uh, the kind of Twitter storm, and uh, hear what you've got to say. Um, hopefully, hopefully you'll come back on and join us over the next few weeks, maybe in, maybe in a month or so, and, and tell us how you're getting on. And uh, from from what I'm, uh, August telling me, uh, a lot of support there in, in, the, in the comments and the chat pit, and uh, a lot of um, praise. Uh, again, even though even from your critics for your courage. Thank you very much, and thanks to you, John, um, for giving me an airing uh -huh. uh, when the the rest of the media would rather not uh, know that I exist and to Olga as well and the two of you do such fantastic work in terms of revealing all of the corruption um, oh. that goes on day by day that the rest of the media don't report so you're doing a huge service well um, th thanks and and, and uh, um, the, be and the very best of luck uh, I think um, It'd be great to have you on in a few weeks and we can talk about this and, and, and see how the, uh, the, dust, the dust settles. And in terms of uh, the election, who do you think will win the presidential election? Well, I'd say the media are determined that Michael D will, but it's, it's very hard to know. Um, you know, I mean, I, it, it's just depressing all around, really, yeah. isn't it? Okay. I, I would hate to see one of the dragons winning, no disrespect to them, but I... Ireland is more than a business. Ireland is a society. And, you know, I, I don't really want to see business, vested business interests taking control of, of our son, Uthron.
Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're as impressed with entrepreneurs as we as we used to be. Uh, anyway, Gemma O'Doherty, um, uh, former presidential hopeful, um, and future journalist in residence uh, in Germany at, a, at the European Journalisting Federation, is it? A European. Anyway, we, European Centre for Press and Media Freedom. European Centre for Press and Media Free, Freedom. Uh, Gemma Doherty, thank you very much, and uh, to everybody on on the broadsheet commenters uh, and readers, we'll be back on the site tomorrow and we, we also have brought you on the telly tomorrow night. Gemma Darty, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thank you.